Where is LED grow lighting now and where is it going? I'm going to answer these questions through the lens of my attendance at MJ BizCon 2022 in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the largest gathering of cannabis professionals in the world. Over 35,000 attendees, 1,400 plus exhibitors, and 320,000 square feet of exhibits throughout two sprawling stories. One would think that this industry is booming by observing the 1,400 plus exhibitors and huge number of attendees at MJ BizCon, but inflation, supply chain shortages, and an oversupply of product on the market has caused sales to slow industry-wide, and lots of businesses in the space are feeling the pain. Just look at Hawthorne Gardening stock, for example. It has dropped significantly starting in 2021 after all that growth. Lux Lighting was gobbled up and burned. Next Light is kind of gone. The Green Sunshine Company was slowly phased out. All of these LED companies are no longer in business for slightly different reasons, but the underlying theme is the industry downturn. So, was this show smoke and mirrors for vendors at this event? Was there a silent desperation under the energetic buzz? In this interesting and difficult context, here are my takeaways on LED grow lighting, where we're at and where it's heading. Rest in peace, HID. HID grow lights are not energy efficient. States recognize the growing strain on the power grid as more commercial grows pop up with a steady stream of legalization. It is making more sense for growers to switch to LEDs to dramatically cut their energy expenses and qualify for rebates. I only noticed one or two booths out of the 113 lighting exhibitors this year that featured HID lights. All grow lighting was LED. And LED has come quite far in the past few years. The intensity has met or surpassed HPS lights. LED spectrums are fuller and can be targeted for specific growth states or within stages of growth. LEDs are the future of grow lighting, and if you still don't believe me, this convention proved it with the underrepresentation of HID lighting. Commercial trend. At the expo, I noticed that 99% of equipment was geared towards commercial applications, nearly no home grow lights or home equipment like tents, inline fans, etc. This is different from the last time I attended MJ BizCon in 2019. At that time, there were vendors advertising products for home growing. This convention showed that the industry is primarily targeting commercial growers since this is where the big money is. Therefore, practically all innovation in the space is devoted to the commercial side, which trickles down to the hobbyist market eventually. That LED grow light that you bought is likely commercial grade. Innovation Speaking of innovation, efficacies are up over 3.2 micromoles per joule. The light output that fixtures now emit is more than enough compared to a few years ago, and enhanced white light is ubiquitous. Despite all this, there hasn't been any dramatic innovations in lighting over the last few years. The light intensity is maxed out, so there's not much room to improve on this aspect anymore. Efficacies will increase a little bit. The only thing that has been improving is the lower price points on LED grow lights. We reached a plateau, and in many ways that's a good thing. The difference between brands or lights is not very significant. Every light at MJ BizCon would grow perfectly fine, whether that's Fluence, HLG, or Medic Grow Light. So how does a company differentiate themselves now and heading into 2023? Currently, LED companies are experimenting and differentiating themselves with diode composition and spectrum. The diode brand, binning, and composition also affects efficacy. Designing a good spectrum with a high efficacy is a balance. Secondly, companies are competing on price. You can pay up to 50% less for a fixture that puts out the same amount of light as a similar fixture. Third, and the hidden but extremely important differentiating factor is customer service and warranty. If a company wants to be in this game long term, they have to deliver great customer service and provide an excellent warranty. Competition. It appears that the big LED players are established. There is little room for new companies to pop up in this market, especially considering the economic conditions at this time. Many LED companies and hydro companies seem to be holding on by a string right now, and I don't foresee anyone new popping up until the market conditions get better or if there is innovation in technology or practices. Chinese Brands The Chinese have stepped up their LED game. The companies that were at the expo displayed good lights that are on par or nearly on par with some of the US brands. They have come quite far and are superior quality to the ones that I saw in 2019. The playing field is becoming more level between Chinese brands and US brands as they're trying to gain market share in the US. It's easy for them to compete on price and growers demand good, affordable lights. Chinese lights are usually less expensive, but are they better quality? 
US-based brands, in my experience, are still a bit better in quality, and you get what you pay for. I think Chinese lights sometimes suffer a bit, but really only a little bit, in build quality. They often tend to use unknown drivers. For example, Mars Hydro is now using a house brand driver after switching from Inventronics drivers on their FC series. Are these drivers made by Mars Hydro or white labeled from a known or unknown company? I don't know. I would like to see more third-party testing for Chinese lights to ensure the specs are what they say. Furthermore, brands that are based overseas typically have inferior customer service and warranty service. It's there, but usually not as quick. Sometimes the communication barrier can be difficult too, due to language, but also cultural differences and expectations. So I think there's still a small gap between Chinese brands and U.S. brands. Will U.S. brands always have an edge, or will that gap close? Will more U.S. brands go out of business because they can't compete with lower-priced fixtures? Who knows? Overall, I think Chinese lights and service are perfectly acceptable, but not always excellent. Rebates. My eyes were open to the rebate potential of LED grow lights. Many electricity providers in different states across the U.S. are offering rebates for retrofits and new builds for commercial grows. Some companies may even rebate grow lights used in home applications, and I know that they do in my home state of Oregon. Some utility companies give you so much money back that you can get the lights for free or nearly free. Click the link in the description to fill out a short pre-application to see if you qualify for rebates if you've recently purchased LED lighting for a commercial grow or plan on purchasing LEDs for a commercial grow. So yeah, you heard that right. Even if you've already purchased LED lights, you may qualify for rebates depending on where you're located. What does the future look like for LED grow lighting? One, automation will be king in this space. We're starting to see some artificial intelligence creep into the industry, but we're still some years away from full automation. As technology develops, will LED grow lights be front and center, incorporating the primary sensors for the grow as environmental data flows into it from the surrounding environment? It may, but at the very least, the environmental controllers we see now will become smarter. Plant monitoring via cameras and sensors will become more ubiquitous. Data on plant health will be fed back to the controllers, and the environment will take the necessary actions to ensure your plants remain healthy. Secondly, more commercial lighting systems will become controlled via a central power bank located outside of the grow space. This removes the need for each light to house a driver, which cuts down on heat and maintenance. There are some companies already offering this feature and service, like California Lightworks and Growers Choice. Click the link up here if you're interested in using these brands with a central power bank for your grow. Third, commercial lighting systems will become wirelessly controlled and do away with wires running between each light. Scheduling and dimming will be done through a wireless mesh network. A few companies offering this feature already are Science LED and HLG through their GrowFlux controller. I noticed some lights at the expo could be controlled by a central controller, but some appeared not to have this ability. Of the fixtures that could be controlled, some were wireless and controlled via an application, and others were wired to a controller. Most fixtures that could be controlled in some way had a dimming option, but there are very few that had spectrum control. Which brings me to my fourth point. In the future, more companies will offer spectrum control. This is beneficial for growers who want to experiment or dial in specific lighting requirements for each particular strain to get the most out of each stage of growth. Spectrum control makes fixtures more expensive, but as prices drop, spectrum manipulation will become more common. There are a few companies that offer spectrum control now, like Science LED, Kind LED, ThinkGrow, California Lightworks, and Optic LED, to name a few. Finally, the big players may not be the most secure. Look at what happened to Lux Lighting, bought out by Hawthorne and killed. It's a turbulent ocean out there. Will more companies be gobbled up by industry whales while smaller companies drown? Furthermore, the best lights are not always made by the largest companies. Hype can be misleading. So to sum up the future of LED grow lighting, soon lighting will be intelligently controlled with the help of artificial intelligence, centrally powered, wirelessly controlled with an application, and have full spectrum manipulation. Some companies like Science LED already are checking a couple of these boxes. The best lights in the near future may not be created by the largest well-known companies. The smaller to mid-sized companies may have an advantage since they can respond to technological innovation more quickly. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, smash the like button and subscribe for more content about LED grow lighting and check out the links in the description below. Also follow us on TikTok and Instagram. Enjoy.